Brooklyn Independent Television. Welcome to Brooklyn Review. I'm Brian Vines. It's been several months since Hurricane Sandy barreled its way through our borough, yet many families are still feeling its ill effects, as if it were just yesterday. Our lead story on this Brooklyn Review highlights a local organization working to change that by getting lives back to normal sooner rather than later. Melissa Rose Cooper has more. The water heater and the boiler is new because um, everything they cover up, all is new because um, they get rusted. Shafaroon Mohammed says it feels like it was just yesterday when she and her family came face to face with Mother Nature's wrath. It's very hard to explain in words because on one minute you, you, you on the bed lie down and the next minute you gotta run. So it's something you, you can't think about. And here, in the space of like, say, five or ten minutes, it did already fill up half because water come through the front, the back, through the windows, everything. Hurricane Sandy dumped about nine feet of water into her Coney Island basement apartment of 14 years, destroying almost everything. We take up everything what we had low down and we put it high up. But I ain't thinking that it's going to the ceiling. So there's no way that anything could have saved. The storm forced her and her family, including her son who had just had surgery and her husband who was recovering from a stroke, to find somewhere else to live for weeks. So it's coming. This wasn't here before. No, this wasn't here. This was recently built. We only here about two weeks. Four months later, Mohammed finally has some walls up in her home and some beds to sleep on. But there's so much more to be done. Brooklyn Community Services, also known as BCS, is hoping to help speed up the road to recovery. As you can see, we're trying to help folks, you know, recover, you know, their structure and we're trying to provide essential furnishings. We're trying to really, really, it's been right now a lot of beds. We've, there's so many people here that are not, that are living like this and their story is not being told. So we're really trying to um, first identify where they are. Um, and kind of help them determine what they need to get from point A to point B. So if, if there were people to help out, it could be done, yeah. right? And the money yeah, to do it. This is an improvement. There weren't walls when we came in here. It was shocking. They were sleeping on blow-up beds. You know, it was cold. You know, when I came in, they did have the boiler. This is kind of the extreme, um, but there are a lot of people living in the extreme. BCS currently has about 2,000 people in their database who need help because of Sandy. To date, the organization has shelled out over $80,000 in aid, but it's going to take a lot more to try and restore any normalcy, and BCS is encouraging anyone who can help to make a donation. There is information about the Brooklyn Builders campaign on the website. It is wearebcs.org. So please, the community needs help. And although the memories of the storm are still painful for people like Ms. Muhammad, she keeps faith that everything will work out in time. You have to try when you have to live. Once your life saved, these is material things, you can make it back. You're right. For Brooklyn Review, I'm Melissa Rose Cooper. Big grandson is in the military. Mm -hmm. As we continue to look for silver linings after Superstorm Sandy, reality is setting in, particularly as it relates to housing and unemployment concerns. The Coney Island Alliance is stepping in to assist Brooklyn job seekers at their annual job fair held at the Abraham Lincoln High School. Reporter Fred Brown attended the fair, where organizers hope to send a clear message that there's plenty of opportunity to work at America's favorite playground by the sea this summer. Right here, um, we're at the check-in area where people who have registered on our online website will come to this table behind me um, and check in with our staff. After they've checked in, they have to fill out an application, an employment application, and then they will be screened by our partners who are hiring or representatives of our partners who are hiring. Well, aside from the fact that it's a direct impact on 
the economy of the area. Um, it, it's a good thing that we're able to, through our partners, um, build uh, a future for the local community. We've been doing this for four years and we've seen some great success stories come out of this program. And Luna Park, for example, has been open since 2010. We have individuals who attended the screening in 2010 and are now full-timers. So it, it's great for the community and we're happy that, you know, these positions are being filled with the local community. I saw it on the TV. Yeah, so I said, let me write down the address and go around and make a few checks and they said, should come here today for our interview, you know, so and it was good, it was okay. I used to work in Nathan before because of the storm, I lost my job, so I said let me give it a try and see what's going on, and it was good, I like it, you know. There's a lot of places right now, it's not really hiring, so I'm glad Nathan's hiring right now, you know. It's a good opportunity for people that's not like really available for other jobs and stuff. They really went out into the community to find people. I mean, job fairs are a great place to find jobs. It's really a lot of opportunities set into one place, so it's easier than going out and just going to stores, looking for applications, finding jobs. That takes a long time, while this is like an hour. It's easy. Finding a job in a down economy is tough enough, and certainly after Hurricane Sandy, it presented a whole nother set of challenges. But judging from the faces of the applicants that you see behind me, there is hope that the sun will once again shine on Coney Island. I used to live here in Coney Island as a child, so I'm here trying to find a job. Yeah. I thought that maybe it would take maybe a year or two to rebuild if they would even try. Because, you know, we had our monumental Ferris wheel and I mean, it's made out of wood, you know? So it's like, where are we going to get that wood again to rebuild? Then when I looked online and I saw that Coney Island was opening up again, I was like, what? You know, then I was like, this is great. So I uh, applied and I got my ticket. So I was kind of ecstatic that I would be able to be a part of it myself from being a child, you know? The future is very bright for Coney Island. We're taking huge strides um, in our initiatives at, out here as part of the Alliance for Coney Island and working, like I said, with the community and the stakeholders. This weekend, we are filling 250 positions for the March 24th opening. A month from now, we'll be filling upwards of 500 positions, getting ready for Memorial Day weekend opening. Things are looking good. Things are looking great. One of the great things, you know, out of Hurricane Sandy is because of the ongoing collaboration within all of Coney Island as a whole, these stakeholders that are out there, these retailers that are out there, were really able to rally together. And instead of feeling like they're in competition with each other, they were able to join forces and make sure that they're all ready for the traditional Coney Island season, which everybody has already come to expect. You have to just, whenever you fell down, you just get up and move on again, you know? Yeah, because you want to accomplish your dreams and your goal in life, and by doing it, you have to work, you know? For Brooklyn Review, I'm Fred Brown. Watch this and other Brooklyn Independent Television episodes online at brickartsmedia.org slash BIT.